Hi everybody, welcome to New Light the Fort. Welcome home. We're glad that you were able to join us today. You know what? Today it's going to be a chill moment for us in worship. But you know, I believe that the Holy Spirit will come here in this place and in your home. And we're going to experience the presence of God like never before. So get ready. Expect from the Lord today. Amen. So this. Waking up knowing there's a reason All my dreams come alive Life is for living with you I've made my decision You lift me up, I fill my eyes with wonder Forever young in your love This freedom's untainted With you, no moment is wasted The sun now bursting through the clouds, black and white, turn to color all around. All is new in the Savior I have found. This is living now. This is living now. God, you're right beside me. In your love, I'm complete. There's nothing like living with you. This life you created, I choose. See the sun now bursting through the clouds, black and white. Turn to color all around. All this new in the Savior. This is living now. Oh, oh, oh. This is living now. You take, you take me higher than I've been before. It's your perfect love that saves me so. God, your freedom is a no you are everything I want and more. You take me higher than I've been before. It's your perfect love that sees me sore. God, your freedom is an open door. You are everything I want and The color all around, all is new in the Savior I am found. One more time, see the sun. See the sun now bursting through the clouds, black and white. Turn to color all around, all is new in the Savior I am found. This is living now. This is living now. You take, you take me higher than I've been before. It's your perfect love that sees me sore. God, your freedom is an open door. You are everything I want and more. You take me higher than I've been before. It's your sees me sore that your freedom is an open door you are everything I want and more take me higher take me higher It's your perfect love that sees me sore. God, 
you're afraid of missing an open door. You are everything One more time. I want and more. You take me higher than I've been before. It's your perfect love that sees me sore. God, you're afraid of missing an open door. You are everything I want and Everything I want and more For everything we want and more Thank you, Lord God is taking us higher God is taking us deeper God is taking us to new heights New glory From faith to faith From grace to grace And from glory to glory God is taking us there Because the Bible says the path of the just is like a shining sun that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Despite of all that is happening all around us, you can expect for greater things from God. You can expect greater glory. You can expect greater things from Him because He paid it all for us. And that's, what we, that's why we're taking communion. We're reminding ourselves of what He has done. This bread symbolizes the broken body of Jesus that was bruised, beaten, crushed for our healing, for our wholeness. So despite of everything that is happening, despite of the viruses all around us, you can expect healing. You can, you can expect wholeness. And you can, you can even expect protection from the Lord because He paid it all for us. The will of God is for you to be healed. The will of God is for you to experience wholeness in your life. So receive it today as you partake of this bread. Let's partake of the bread. Come on, if you need healing today, just receive from the Lord. Receive wholeness. Receive, receive life. Amen. Amen. Now this juice that represents his blood. It was shed for the forgiveness of all, all of our sins. Now we can come to God boldness, with boldness, without fear, without condemnation. Because he paid it all for us. You are forgiven by the blood of Jesus. It has been paid for. So you can expect greater things. You can expect that God will take you higher. God will take you deeper. You can soar high. Amen. Because He paid it all for us. Expect great things. Expect good things to happen. Amen. Let's partake of the juice. You know what? In every season of your life, you can expect that God will be with you. God will provide for you because He is our provider. God will heal you because He is our healer. God will sustain you because He is with you all through it all. So right now, we're going to worship the Lord. Let's receive from Him.
that in every season, no matter what it is that we're going through, God is always more than enough for us. Doesn't matter if we've been locked down, doesn't matter if we've been able to go out, He is still more than enough. And His provision and His protection are always available for you and for me. In fact, we speak that over you that are watching today that God's protection and provision in the midst of everything that's happening is just going to overwhelm you and that you will have a sense of God's peace just come upon your heart, that all will be well, no matter what happens. Amen? Now, welcome to New Life The Fort. We're so glad that you could join us today. It's not an accident that you showed up online. In fact, we know that God has something very special just for you. So if you're a first timer, please drop us a message, send us a comment. We wanna be able to help you. We wanna be able to pray with you. We wanna just you know, welcome you to our house today. Now, Pastor Alvin and I normally are the ones that are preaching, or maybe one of our other pastors. But today, we've got a special guest joining us. In fact, he's one of our Singaporean brothers. Benjamin Lim is an educator. He's been a pastor. He's been a general manager. He is a businessman. And he is going to impart his heart today to each and every one of you. So I pray that with ears that are tuned in to hear what God is saying, you are going to receive from this man of God. He doesn't just minister in Singapore. He's been all over the world just bringing this gospel of grace into all these different places. And I believe that you are going to leave here impacted and ready for more. Amen. So get your hearts ready as, as Benjamin Lim comes to give us the word. Hey, New Life The Fort. Thank you for having me today. I'm Benjamin from Singapore from my home to your homes. You know, welcome to Church Online. You know, I want you to know that even when we're online, God is the God of time and space. You know, um, He can transcend time and space. You know, as you hear the Word of God going out today, I believe that God has a word for all of you. You know, I miss Philippines. I miss the most of all the warmth of the people in the Philippines. I was there at New Life of Fort. I think there must have been like, oh, uh, well, I think eight years ago, Eight years ago or more, you know, I really enjoyed myself. I miss you guys, you know. Hope that I'll be able to travel soon, you know. Um, and I just want to wish Pastor Elvin happy birthday, happy belated birthday. You know, uh, you are an awesome, awesome pastor, a faithful man, you know, that I know that you're going to be super abounding with God's blessings in your life. Amen. I also want to thank, um, I mean, I want to thank Pastor Elvin and Pastor Mitch for inviting me, for giving me the privilege to share the word of God, you know, and um, I, I've known them for years, you know, and church, I, I just want you to know that um, you've got great pastors, you know, you've got fantastic pastors, pastors with big heart, pastors that really care for the flock, you know, there, there are career pastors, right, I mean, which means that they take ministry as a career, you know, but there are pastors that are called, they are called pastors, they are called by the Lord. And these are people that pastor because of God's calling in their lives, you know, and they could have had a career out there, but they chose the calling of God because they love the Lord and they love you. I want you to know that, you know, New Life The Fort, that you have pastors that are genuine, they are sincere, they are anointed, 
they are appointed for such a time as this. You know, so Hong Hong, your pastors, encourage them, honor them, always celebrate them. You know, they are, they are great, 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 great people. You know, um, and they are there for you all the time, you know, in your good times and your bad times. You know, that's the wonderful ministry of uh, pastors that God has given to his people. You know, so value them, treasure them, honor them, celebrate them always. Amen. 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 So thank you once again for having me here. I want to bring you a word today, you know, uh, from the Lord, I believe. I know that we are in this uh, very extended pandemic times. You know, uh, I think at the beginning of it in 2000 uh, and 2020, that was last year uh, in Singapore where we were. I mean, we start to hear something that's going on, but we, we never ever thought that it's going to blow up to this kind of global proportion, you know, that has brought um, destruction and disruption, both this destruction and disruption to the world, you know, to society. We see in the world today as a result of COVID-19 pandemic, you know, uh, people die, you know, civil unrest, economies, uh, you know, are just being disrupted, um, jobs are lost, people are plunged into poverty, you know, and there's so many, so many, so many things, you know, and I, I know that, the, and also, you know, I, I, I know and I observed and I've seen many sincere ministries, you know, that has been encouraging people, prophesying, you know, and giving a word. You know, I, I don't believe that this plague comes from the Lord. I believe, you know, that it's not from the Lord. God is not the author of it, but God can use it. God can use it. You know, sometimes the things in our life or the, the incidents and the events, the things that happen, you know, may not, may, not, may not look like it is God, but I want you to know that even though it is not God, it could be the devil. It could be your own foolishness, but God is bigger than them all. God can use it. God can use this crisis. God can use this pandemic when his word says God calls all things. It includes the good things, the bad things, the not so good things, and the not so bad things. You know, he will use it for your good and my good. Amen, 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 amen. And I want to share a word with you today about what to do. How should we look at the pandemic today? Some of you might be saying, hey, you know, Benjamin, it's, it's, it's getting too long. It's getting too long. I understand it's getting just too long. You know, I, I, I know, of, like I said earlier, I know of ministers, they are prophesying that this will come to an end, you know, by when, last year, December, hold on, you know, and, and it's just getting too long. I understand that, you know, uh, but I want you to know that, that I, I believe, I believe, you know, um, I don't think this is going to last forever. It's not going to last forever, but it is a difficult season. I want you to know that the Lord knows that it is a difficult season, but he is in this difficult season with you, right? And the word I want to bring first to you is from Jeremiah 29 verse 11. It's a very familiar verse, but I, I'm going to ask all of us to look at this passage with fresh eyes today, right? And let's, before we jump right into the word, let us all pray right now where you are. Father, I thank you for this time, for your, for your time together, Lord, that we can be together in the spirit. We may not be in the same space, but we thank you that we are spiritual beings. I pray, Lord, that your anointing of the Holy Spirit will just go throughout all the homes of the people watching. Let it be a blanket of your comfort. Let it be a blanket of your love. Let it be a blanket, O oh Lord, of the Holy Spirit coming on your people, Lord, that brings such strength. And I pray, Father, that you will cause today our eyes of our heart to be enlightened, that we may be able to see the plans that you have for us. We thank you for your anointing. Anoint the hearers and anoint the speaker. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. You know, so let's dive right into the word. It says in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. The, God, the Lord does not just, the Lord declares it. The Lord proclaims it, that he knows the plans he has for you. You may not know the plans you have for your life, but what is important, it's not that you know, but it's that God knows. Sometimes when the lack of knowledge in our life of his divine plan, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It means, and it causes us to walk by faith, to live by faith, trusting not in the known plans, but trusting in the all-knowing God. Amen, amen. And it says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. The plan of God is never, ever to harm you and your family. Even in during this time, I want you to know. And I'm going to give you the key how you are going to see the goodness of God. Amen. It's not to harm you, it's to prosper you. And plans to give you a hope and a future. A hope and a future. Write that down. God is giving you a hope and a future. You know, there are many depressions we hear. There's a whole heightened awareness about mental wellness. You know, people are getting depressed. You know, the, but the Bible says, tell us why. Why are people depressed? You know, hope deferred makes a heart sick, the Word of God says. When a hope is being deferred, it makes your heart sick. You know, but I want you to know there's no hopelessness in the Lord. There is hopelessness in the world, but there's no hopelessness in the Lord. He is our hope and he is your future. Amen. You know, and we love this verse, you know, it, it's been quoted in Christendom, you know, for so much, so long and in so many places. I've heard this preach again and again, and again, and again. And we use this verse to encourage our friends, right? Some of you may even know this verse very intuitively, even though you do not know where it, that is coming from Jeremiah 29. You have small cards, you know, that has these verses printed on it. You give around. People like to share that on IG, Facebook, and all that. You know, and, and usually, you know, and this is what I learned from the Lord. And usually when we share this verse, and I have done that, Usually when we share this verse, it's to share with someone that is going through a difficult time and to let them know that things will get better. You know, that things, circumstances will change. You know, that we will go back one day to that same place that you came from. You know, that the plans that God has for us, it's a good plan, right? And, and, and it's the right thing to do. You know, but the, the Holy Spirit began to show me uh, just, uh, I think a couple of months ago, that this verse was quoted this verse was written, you know, uh, by Jeremiah, given to the people. You know, it was not meant to encourage them that there's going to come change. In fact, it is to say, you know, in the same passage, it's let the people know that change is already here. Embrace the change. Embrace the now. You know, and so what happened? Let me give you a bit of context. You know, in Jeremiah 29, this, this passage, this prophecy that was given to the children of Israel, it happened at a time where the children of Israel was carried away into the Babylonian captivity, right? And so they were carried out of Israel into a foreign land, right? And so therefore, the, the, and Jeremiah came to give a word of encouragement, you know, and, and, and I thought, what word of encouragement it is, you know, to, to hear that, you know, that that is not the end, you know, that that the, the people are being carried away, you know, it's that God has better plan for them. But what I didn't realize, that the plans that God has for them is right in the midst of their troubles, right in the midst where they are at. Right where the crisis is, God says that he has plans for them, plans to prosper them, plans to give them a hope and a future. I mean, I'm, I'm like, oh my, yeah. 
Well, what does that mean? That, that means what I'm trying to tell you here today is that right where you are, right where you are, that's God has a plan for you. Things may not change, but right where you are, God is telling you, embrace the change. Embrace the change that is already here. God's grace is in the now. God's grace is never in the future. His grace is now. His help, the Bible says, He's the present help now. How do you? How, how could you say that? You say, Pastor, you know, uh, Benjamin, how could you say that? That you know, the plans is 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 now where, where I am. Because if you go a few verses before the in Jeremiah twenty nine verse four to seven, it says, "Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who who were carried away captive." whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses, dwell in them, plant gardens, eat their fruit, take wives and beget sons and daughters, take wives for your sons and your daughters to your husbands so that they may bear sons and daughters that you may increase there and not diminish and seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive and pray to the Lord for it, for in its peace, you will have peace. So what Jeremiah is saying here is that but when he said later on in the plans that God has for you, that plan is to, is to just dwell. Enjoy where you are. Don't fight it. Don't go back to the past, right? But celebrate where you are. Build houses, dwell in it. You know, know that it's not the situation. It is God that is there with you. Though the plans that God has for you is where you are. It's where you are. You know, in the change, in this change, there will come a way of escape. In this testing, there will come a, it will come a way of escape. The plans that God has for you is in the trouble, not outside of the trouble. Oh, wow, you're going to like, Mm, I, 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 are, you, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? You see, the, the plan to prosper you is where you are, not plan B. Plan A. God is not surprised by this whole pandemic. God is not surprised by the extension and how long, you know, and how terrible it is. It is all. God has not fallen off the throne. The last I checked, He is still on the throne. He is still on the throne, people. He is still on the throne. But God has a plan right where you are. But the Lord wants you to embrace where you are. Celebrate where you are. Give thanks, not for the pandemic. Give thanks that the Lord is still there with you where you are. Give thanks that He's working something out in the midst of this imperfect situation. In this crisis, Christ is everything to you. Did you hear that? In this crisis, Christ is everything that you need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So be, be faithful. Be present. You know, and you'll see God prospering. You see, you know, it's about, but, 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 where, where, what, I see destruction all around. I just lost my job. You know, I, I do not know if I can make it another day. You know, we, we, we can't go out. You know, you know, Benjamin, it's, it's just getting tougher and tougher. You know, I'm feeling claustrophobic. You know, I, 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 I just can't take it anymore. You know, the, the Lord is telling you that super abounding grace is going to flow in your life. You know, there, there, I, I remember there was, a, there was a time in my life, you know, I, things were just going bad and, 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 and everything that could happen wrongly happened all wrongly. And I, I, I was a faith, you know, uh, I was a faith, I got big faith believing God for great things. And I, I was very discouraged, very disappointed. And I said, Lord, I, I, I pray, I believe you, I read the word, I meditate on the word. But things are not, not just not changing, but it's getting worse. You know, and, and I remember, you know, that the Lord just told me to celebrate the present. Celebrate the present. In fact, I hear the Lord says, will you still worship me if nothing changed from here? You know, and I came to a place that I just told the Lord, I said, Lord, if this is my portion, for the rest of my life, if this is, which I know is not, but if this is, from my heart, Lord, I will be happy, I will be faithful, I will praise you, I will worship you, I will give glory to your name wherever I am. 
you know, and then things start to change. Things begin to change, you know, God begin to open new doors, God begin to, you know, create things in my life that I have never seen before, you know. And so I, I want you to know that where you are right now, that's God's plan of prosperity, where you are right now. I know you can't see it, but this is what the Word of God says. That plan that Jeremiah talks about for the children of Israel was not to go back to Israel. was right, right where they are in Babylon. And God says, build your houses. Set up, set up. Don't worry. That the act of faith during this time is to settle where you are, be at peace, and celebrate what you have. You know, in fact, during this time of pandemic, I'm sure you, you all, all of you have experienced that. You, you begin to realize you don't need a lot. You don't need a lot to live. You don't need a lot to live a life. You begin to realize that, wow, um, actually, those things that I thought would make me happy, you know, it is the simple things in life. It is it's, it's the smile when you parents see it on the face of your child, you know, it, 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 is, it is the hand, the warmth of the hand you hold of your loved ones. You, you realize that brings so much joy and peace. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and I believe that this is not going to last forever. I want to say that again. This is not going to last forever. But while you are in it, there's prosperity. There's provision. Amen. And so you say, then, then what do we do? I said, what do we do? You know, I want to bring you a very simple and something we all know in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. It says, don't worry about anything. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. I love it. So don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. And His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in the crisis. No, as you live in Christ Jesus. So during this time, you know, what do I do? I feel stuck at home. I don't know, you know what's going to happen the next day, the next week. You know, don't worry. Pray about everything. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. You know something about prayer? Prayer releases our anxieties and receives our blessings. Prayer is not a work. Some people say, oh, you know, some grace people, they will say, oh, you know, Prayer is a word. I don't pray. You know, I don't believe in prayer. You know, you, you, then you do not know grace. Then you do not know God. Prayer is not a work. Prayer is a posture of grace. Prayer is the means by which we die to self and the means by which we receive God's blessing. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So the Lord, you know, during this time, just talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. You know, when, when things are getting too, too much, you're overwhelmed, go take a walk. Take a walk and start having a conversation with the Lord. We think that prayers can only be met, can, can only be made in church. We think that prayer, prayer is before worship or at the end of the sermon. No, no, no. You, 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 Paul says pray unceasingly. You can pray anywhere, anywhere you are when you pray. You know what? God will hear you and God always hear you. You know, I, I saw a friend of mine, he says, heaven may be silent, but heaven is not there. Heaven may be silent, he wrote this. Heaven may be silent, but heaven is not deaf. You know, sometimes you may feel like things, you know, you may feel like God is not saying anything back to you, but he's not deaf. He's listening. He's listening. He's listening. You know, but one of the reasons why, you know, one of the reasons why, you know, we, we do not receive. One of the reasons why we do not receive is not because of the Lord. One of the reasons why I learned in the book of 1 John, when we pray, we do not receive, is because our heart condemns us. Oh, you have scripture for it, Benjamin? Yes, it's found in 1 John. You know, 1 John 
It says in verse 19, By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him, for whenever our heart condemns us, oh, I love this, whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart. That tells you something. Today, when you experience condemnation, that condemnation is not from the Lord. It's from your own heart. When you do something wrong, God does not condemn you anymore. Why? Because he has already condemned his son for your sin and my sin at the cross of Jesus. But today, when we do something, and we do do, right? We, we stumble, all right? We, we get frustrated, we get angry, you know, we kick the cat. <laughs> and we, 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 we think that, hey, you know, we, 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 we did make it. But I want you to know, I want you to know, I want you to know, you know, that it is not God condemning you today. It is your heart. Your heart condemns you. But God is greater than our heart. And he knows everything. Oh, what assurance. God knows everything about you. God knows everything about you. You know, and he does not condemn you. In fact, in the next, very next verse, in verse 21, it says, Beloved. Oh, he calls you beloved. He, does, he doesn't call you sinners. He doesn't call you, con, you know, oh, condemn one. He said, beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. What does that mean? If we allow our heart to condemn us, we will lose confidence. We will lose confidence. So that, what does that tell us? That, you know, the reason why we have no confidence when we pray is because our heart is condemned. That's why it is so important to know that there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That today, you know, there's therefore now no condemnation, Romans 8, 1. That is the verse for you. That every time when you pray, you know that you're no longer condemned. You know what? You have confidence before God. And then it says, and whatever we ask, we receive from Him. Wow. I love that. Whatever we ask, we receive from Him. Confidence before the Lord comes from no condemnation in ourselves. And that places us in a position now, you know, in a position to receive from Him. You are getting me excited. You can tell that I'm, I, I'm leaning forward right now, right? Because I'm, I'm getting excited. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing this. I, I, I want this in my life. You know, so, so when, whenever you pray, you know that, hey, God prosper you. God has plans to prosper you, but you're still in the midst of these challenges. But you pray, you know, don't worry about every, anything. Cast all your cares on Him. Pray about everything, you know. But when you pray, pray in confidence. How do you pray in confidence? Knowing that nothing, whatever you have done, whatever you have think wrongly, you know, God does not condemn you. And when you pray with that confidence, not in yourself, not because you have done right, or not because you have not done wrong. Some of us may feel like, oh, today I can pray because you know what? I've been a good boy. I've been a, I, I've been a good girl. You know, I, I, I did nothing wrong. I encouraged somebody. You know, in fact, I, I took time to worship God and therefore you have confidence that, oh, my friend, that confidence is shaky because one day you can be up spiritually strong and you pray strong prayer. But the next day you can be down, you know, and therefore you think that your prayers God's going to answer. So you, 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 you're going to go, you're going to go, up and down, up and down, up and down. Your spiritual life is going to up and down. It's so unsteady. It is so unstable. You know, that, so don't, don't build that confidence on your behavior, but build your confidence on what the Lord Jesus has done for you. Pray knowing that you are no longer condemned. Another word for no condemnation, you know, is that pray because you know you are righteous. You have a right standing with God. Because if you are condemned, you are put aside, put away from His presence. But when you know that you always have a right standing with God, and you pray out of that. Oh, I got another verse for you. It says in James 5, that the earnest prayer, I love this, the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces 
wonderful results. The earnest prayer of a righteous person. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It's the earnest prayer of a righteous person. It has great power. So what is a righteous person? A righteous person is someone that has received no condemnation. But how is it possible that we receive no condemnation? How is it possible that we are righteous? Because you see, my friend, righteousness, the Bible says, is a gift. It's not a work. It's not based on what you do. It's based on what Jesus has done. You know, in fact, in, 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 in 2 Corinthians 5.21, he said, He who knew no sin, Jesus who knew no sin, became sin for you and I that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Whoa. I love that. I want to say that again. He, Jesus, who knew no sin, what did he do? He became sin for you and I. At the cross. He became sin for you and I at the cross that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. There you go. That's a divine exchange. That's why you can pray prayers that has great power and produce wonderful results because you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Say this with me wherever you are. Say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Say that again. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And say this with me, say, and when I pray, I, my prayer produces great power and great results. Amen. Amen. Some of you are thinking like, really? Really? That's because you, you are asking really because you think it's based on your merit. It's based on on your right doing. No, 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 no. Today in the New Testament, it, the gospel tells us today that we, our righteousness is a gift. Our righteousness is Jesus' righteousness. Is it God didn't say he take the righteousness of your pastors and put it on you. God did not say he take the righteousness of the bishops, you know, and put it on you. Or God took the righteousness of the apostles. No, God took the righteousness of Jesus. Oh, man. Oh, man. The righteousness of Jesus, which is the righteousness of God. Because he is God. So you are as righteous as Jesus is. How did Jesus become sin? He was made sin. Did he, did he, did he do anything sinful? No, he didn't. He didn't do anything sinful, right? He think no sin. He did no sin. In him, there is no sin, the Bible says. So he, he was a, a perfect sinless sacrifice on the cross. But sin was put upon him. Sin was laid upon him. So in the same way, in the same way, we pull off sins in our life. We committed sin, we thought sin, in us is sin, then how did we become the righteousness of God? The righteousness was put upon you. The righteousness of Jesus was laid upon you that today you are the righteousness of God in Christ. And when you pray, oh, you produce great power and you produce wonderful results, your prayer. You are going to turn things around because God is, in this season, God is using you, your mouth, to turn things around in your life that as you pray, you experience great power, you experience great results. Amen. I could just see some of you, you know, jumping off your chest and, 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 and dancing and singing because you, 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 you are saying this. See, you're saying it. Some of you are like, oh, is, is this true? Come on, man. Come on. You know, just, just it is not what I say. It's not what I say. It's what the scripture says. Search it out for yourself. The Bible says the prayer, the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produce great results. You know, I, I remember there was an incident many years ago 
you know, I was in the, I was working um, and I, I had a bad day, you know, I was angry, frustrated, you know, and uh, there, that must have been like more than 15 years ago. And then I got a call that came in, you know, and at the, at the time I was a deacon in the church and, and I heard this, heard this, is this deacon? Uh, I said, oh man, you know, I was angry. I just scolded somebody. And then now I hear, is this deacon? Suddenly that, that pastoral consciousness, that pastoral anointing just came. Oh yes. But before that, I was shouting at somebody. <laughs> That's the real life, right? You know, and I'm like, oh yes, how can I help you? You know, and then the person be, oh, I got your number to someone, and suddenly my tone, you know, was so gentle, so full of love. You know, <laughs> inside me, I felt like a hypocrite. You know, well, because I was angry, I was stressed, and oh man, somebody call me, but I gotta put on that front, and I feel like a hypocrite. You know, and then the person began to share with me that she has a need. She has a need that she, you know, she had cancer. You know, I'm like, oh man, you know, and she said, can you please pray for me? I felt like God wants, you, wants me to call you to pray for me. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, God has a sense of humor. He, he got an angry guy to pray for someone who needs help. Now I got no faith at that point. You know, I'm, I definitely don't feel right with God, you know, but I remember, you know, that I I was like, oh man, why did you have to ask me to pray for you? Call somebody else, call somebody else, get another deacon, get another pastor, you know. But it, when she said that God, God asked me to call you, I'm like, God, God, you are teaching me something here. You know, and, and I just, okay, you know, I said, sure, lady, you know, let, let, let me go to a quiet place. I took my phone and went to a quieter place, you know, hoping that I would come down. I didn't feel faith, but I just say, Lord, the prayer of the righteous man avails much. I just pray that, Lord, prayer of the righteous, not me, it's not me. And I just pray. And I just, as I started to get into the flow of praying, you know, I lose consciousness of myself, my emotions. It is one thing. That's a wonderful thing that prayer does. Prayer causes you to lose consciousness of yourself, of your environment, of what you've just been through, and it makes you conscious of God. And, and, and I just pray and then I initially I hear amen, amen. I must have prayed for like three to four minutes. I prayed long press, you know. And then, you know, I, I hear a silence and I say, hello, hello, hello. And after that, I say amen. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, you know, sister, are you there? You know, and then after a while, about maybe like 30 seconds or so, she came back. She said, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, I'm here. So I thought, you know, maybe my, my prayer was that annoying <laughs> that she left the phone. Then she told me, I'm so sorry, you know, I'm so sorry, but I, you know, as you were praying just now, I felt the power of God, you know, and I just felt, I said, I'm like, what? You, 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 you felt the power of God and you fell? I said, I'm like, um, it was the most undeserving moment. It's the moment I feel the worst. I, I, I didn't feel like I, I want to pray in fact. You know, truth be told, I want to curse at somebody and not pray for somebody. You know, but she said she felt the power of God. You know, I I was humble. That day onwards, I began to realize it's not my prayer. It's it is it is when I pray, it is the prayer of the righteous that I'm praying out of God's righteousness, not my righteousness. And she felt the power. A few days later, she went back to the doctor. The doctor came back and gave her a report that the cancer was no more. The cancer was no more. She was so excited. You know, the following, uh, I think, weekend, she came with the testimony, you know, to show me the testimony, you know, uh, even the, with all the medical reports. I, I, I'm so deeply humble. But that's when I began to realize the prayer, prayer, even prayer, does not depend on our behavior. Prayers that produces results and power of God, you know, it's based on His righteousness in our life. And when we know that we pray that, you know, you're going to see power to change your life. You're going to see results that will bless you, your family, your neighbors, and the people around you. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. You know, and, and, and in closing, 
I also want to say this that during this time of pandemic, I, I know we are all constrained, right? Uh, we, we, cannot, some, we can't meet people all the time. Uh, I want you to know that prayer transcends space because Jesus is the Lord of space. Prayer transcends space. They, you don't have to be physically there. Remember that story I just I shared earlier? I prayed over the phone. I prayed over the phone. Jesus transcends space. He's the Lord of space. I know some of you may say, yeah, but, but there's some there, there's some incidents in the gospel that, you know, the, the, like the woman with the issue of blood, she pressed in, man. She touched Jesus, man. But you see, Jesus did not turn and say, and say to her that it was your physical touch. He said, it was your faith. Your faith has made you well. You see, faith transcends. Prayer of faith. Prayer transcends space. Faith transcends space because Jesus, the author and the finisher of faith, he is the Lord of space. That is the hope we have. You know, in fact, I want to read to you from this passage in John chapter 4, in the incident. John chapter 4, right? In John chapter 4, you know, this incident happened. Everybody knows the first miracle of Jesus, right? Everyone knows. The first miracle of Jesus. And what is that? The water turned into wine, right? The wedding at Cana, right? And how Jesus performed his first miracle, water into wine. You hear that preach, you know, in weddings, in marriage seminars, on Sundays. But most people do not know when did Jesus perform his second miracle. Wow. You know, if... if, if if the Lord allows it to be recorded as a second miracle, it is no less significant than the first miracle. And it is found in this passage. It says in John chapter 4, verse 46 to 54, it says, once more, once more he visited Cana. So he went back to Cana. In Galilee, Jesus went back to Cana, Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum, all right, in Capernaum. So Jesus was in Cana. It was another place far away from Capernaum. And when this man, the, the royal official, heard that Jesus has arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to Jesus and begged him to come from Cana. He asked Jesus, who is in Cana, to go to Capernaum to heal his son, who was close to death. And Jesus said, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will never believe. And the royal official said, sir, come down before my child dies. So the official thought, you know, that Jesus must be there. And some of you, sometimes you feel like my, my, my pastor must be at my home, you know, or, or my leaders must be there and they must be meet me where I am. Right. But Jesus, why was Jesus reply? He said, go, your son will leave. And the man took Jesus at his word and departed. And while he was still on the way, when he was still going back, right? Because Jesus said, go, your son live. He declared, go, your son live. And the man took Jesus at his word, departed. And while he was still on the way, his servants met him with the news that his boy was living. Wow. So he... The, the son was in another place. When, when Jesus declared it, or a person in another place, he was on his way back. He has not even arrived home. His servant says, your son lives. Man, that's the miraculous power of our Lord. And so he inquired, this, this, this royal official, very smart man, he said, and when he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, yesterday at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. Then the father realized that this was the exact time at which Jesus said to him, your son will live. Whoa! Hallelujah. Amazing. This was the exact time. I, I want you to know that today, 
you know, maybe you need to pray for someone in another province. You need to pray for someone in another city. Maybe it's your loved one. You know, maybe distance. But I want you to God is a Jesus is the Lord of space. Space does not stop His power from flowing. Space does not stop your prayer from being answered. You know, it, it will happen at the exact time. And then he says, and so he and his whole household believe. Wow. You know, after right after that, it's going to bring salvation. I, I want you to know that even during this time, as the Lord is encouraging you today to pray, to declare, don't let distance stop you. Right? Even if the person is far away, you know, you, you, you know, just through the phone, if you can just declare, you know, you will not just see a miracle in the person's life, but you will see salvation in him and his household. Because he says here, that so he and his whole household believe. And this was the second miracle Jesus performed after coming from Judea to Galilee. It was the second miracle is to show that he is the Lord of space. The first miracle is to show that he's the Lord of time. But the second miracle is to show that Jesus, the Lord of space. I know especially during this time, we are familiar with that. Social distancing, quarantine, you know, maybe you have someone that's quarantined, you cannot visit because what is happening. Yeah, I want you to know that, hey, don't let that separation by space stop you from praying prayers that will produce wonderful results and releases God's power. Amen, amen, amen. That's what Jesus demonstrated. Amen. You know, in fact, I, I have a fresh testimony. Let me just bring it up. I have a fresh testimony I want to read. You know, and, and this happened, you know, just a while ago. I was just using, I was on my IG, you know, and I was just asking people, you know, if they have any prayer requests that day. I just felt like I want to pray for people, you know, and, and someone and someone asked me to pray. And I prayed for many people. And this was one of the testimony that came in. You know, and, and he, he wrote a testimony. He said, my wife and I have been open to conceiving a baby for a while and started reading pregnancy books in 2020 to start building our faith. Well, I guess they decided that there's nothing to do during quarantine, so they decided to have a baby. <laughs> and so we decided we, want, we would like to have a baby next year and started planning for it. That was in 2020. We heard stories of people who took quite a while to conceive, range, ranging from months to even years. But on 30th of March, 2021, you know, I saw Benjamin open up a prayer question box on Instagram stories. I've never seen him done something like this before, which is true. I seldom do it. I just, as I let, I felt like by the Lord. And, I, and, and he said, if he felt that this was an invitation from God, it was not me, but it was an invitation from God. And I decided to ask boldly in the question box for us to conceive supernaturally. All right, and, but ben, and Benjamin then replied with this, the Lord grant you and your wife's desire to have a champion, not just a child, a champion, one that shall be a blessing to you and the world. And then he says, and in the following month, my wife conceived, wow, right in the following month. He said there was almost, almost no waiting time. Praise Jesus as our heart's desire. So the champion baby has been conceived in my wife's womb. We are elated and we know that our heart, we know in our hearts that this is truly a gift from God. We're excited to hold this little champion in our hands in 2022. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, uh, wow. Can you, can you imagine? <laughs> He, he, I like what he said, God, there was almost no waiting time. It was immediate, like what happened in the story of the royal official at the exact time that Jesus declared. You know, at the exact time when prayer was offered, when I prayed for the person, you know, exact time, the miracle happened. The miracle happened. I want you to know at the exact time, the time that you pray, at the time that you declare, you know, God hears and you, but you will produce wonderful result but you see but it's not you I, I i'm not sharing this testimony to say that the prayer i the prayer i pray works I, I i i'm here to tell you it's not me but it is the prayer 
of the righteous. You know, I got answer my prayer today, not because you know I'm a, I'm a minister of the gospel, you know, because you know I'm anointed, not because I'm gifted. I got the prayers that releases great power and produces wonderful result is the prayer of a righteous man. And that is for you and I, because you and I became the righteousness of God when Jesus became sin at the cross for you and I. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Oh man, I hope by now you receive something from the Lord. I, 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 I feel so real. So I feel oh I feel like a like like an anointing just released right now into where wherever you are right now into your homes wherever you are right now I want you just wherever you are right now just just put your hand on your heart you know and and, and in the other hand hold you know hold, hold, hold whatever cares you have right now let's let's just do what the Lord is asking us to do today oh just just close your eyes. And see your hand holding those cares, those anxieties, right? Those things that bother you, miracles you're waiting for, the provision, the favor, the wisdom that you need. Hold it in your hand, you know, hold it tight. Hold it tight. And say this with me, say, Lord Jesus, your word says, do not worry about anything. And now I release these cares, these concerns, these requests into your hands. Just open your just open your hands right now and the gesture that you have released it to the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you that you hear, you see, and you will respond to the prayers of your saints right now. At this exact time, let the miracles happen. Let healing flow, restoration, provision, protection, prosperity. Let it just flow right now to every person that is watching this. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayer. You hear our prayer because we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Jesus' mighty name. Amen, 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 amen. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I just felt, I don't know about you, I just felt the anointing of God for myself here, where I am. And I believe it is so for you. Amen. Remember that the Lord is a, is a Lord of space, you know, and your prayer transcends space. Your prayer, it's like incense that ascends to heaven, sweet smelling, you know, and, and God, God is answering those prayers at the exact time that you pray. Amen. And know that, you know, you know what? Even this prolonged, hey, no problem, man. Tell yourself, no problem, man. God's plan is right where I am. God's plan is right where I am to prosper me, to give me a hope and a future. I don't have to change position. I don't have to change country. I don't have to change city because you know what? It is not the city. It is not the country that provides, that gives the prosperity. It is God. I say it again. It is God with you. Oh man, it is God with you that will provide for you. That will protect you. That will prosper you. That has plans for you to give you a hope and a future. Amen, 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 amen. Boom. I preach myself happy. Man, I, I'm just trying to 
contain myself, sit it down because of this video recording. I'm so excited. I'm so excited, New Life The Fort. I believe the greater days are ahead of you. You know, you've got wonderful leaders, you know, run with them, you know, run with them to experience the promises of God that are yes and amen in your life. Amen. You know, and thank you once again for having me. <clears throat> you know, I look forward, I look forward soon and very soon, soon and very soon. I look forward to seeing you guys <clears throat> in Manila, Market Market, you know, New Life of the Fort. You know, you are you are a lovely bunch of people. I, I remember my my time there, you know, preaching and sharing, you know, on stage, off stage, everything was just so lovely. You you guys are lovely. I miss you guys. I hope to see you soon one day, you know. And you know, just just know, just know, all right. When times are difficult, remember this. Remember that verse, right? Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Amen. I see you again. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Elvin and, <clears throat> and Pastor Mitch for having me once again. You know, I look forward to the next time. See you guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you so much, Benjamin. That was a great word. But I believe more than that, it is a now word. As you know, over the past month, we have been talking about the importance of now, the importance of declaring and shaping your future by the words that you speak today. Saktong sakto yung word na narinig natin today. And uh, I don't want to let it pass, no? Because we know, yes, hindi natin kailangan ulit-ulitin about the situation that we are all in. But despite of that, I believe God is still able to show His incredible kindness and goodness in your life. It begins with recognizing His love that He poured and demonstrated when He gave His Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Lord and Savior as payment for our sins. If you want the fruit of declaration, I believe the starting point of that is declaring that Jesus is your Lord and He is your only Savior. In fact, if you want that, let me lead you in a very simple prayer. Although this prayer is simple, I believe it opens up a gateway for you to be with God. Not only later on in life, not only when all, all is gone, all is done, but even today. Let's pray. Say, say this with me. Father, I thank you that you love me so much. And your love was demonstrated on the cross. And Jesus died for me to pay for all of my sins. Today, I recognize you as my Lord and my Savior. Today, I know that not only that I am your child, but I have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I will never be the same again. I expect victories. I expect a provision, restoration, and healing in my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We are so glad that you prayed that prayer. By the way, if you did, why don't you comment down below? Let us know that you did this today. I'm sure we have people that will just love on you. But more than that, we want to connect with you. We want to hear your story and we want to celebrate you. Okay? Well, we want to appreciate you for being here with us. Every Sunday, wala pong putol yan, wala pong... Uh, hindi po hihinto yan. Regardless whether it's live, whether it's broadcast, whether it's recorded, we have this opportunity to be with you. Also, on Mondays, we have Ask at 6 p.m. Uh, visit our social media platforms to get more information. On a Wednesday naman, we have Refuel. A lot of things are going on. This coming Wednesday, it will be Power Night. We will be declaring, we will be praying, and we will be speaking and shaping our tomorrow with our declarations and prayer. By the way, if you want to give, if you want to give your tithes, your offering, you want to gift this ministry, this church, 
you are more than welcome to do so. If you want information about how to do that, then we encourage you, don't leave right away. Kunin niyo po, may lalabas sa mga QR codes, if that's what you need. All the information you need in regards to your tithes, your offering, your giving, your donations, whatever it is, we welcome that. In fact, um, before we leave, I want to pray and, and uh, speak a blessing over your giving. But more than that, speak a blessing over you. So here we go. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you multiply the giving of the people, whether it be their tithes, if they believe in giving in tithes, for those who are giving their first fruits or giving a donation or just simply uh, a giving out of the overflow of the abundance that you have shown their lives. Lord, I know this is not the ultimate. There's always more in you. And I pray for that more to be manifested and displayed in their lives this coming week. May you protect them and give them health. I pray that throughout this week, they will have peace, wholeness, nothing missing and nothing broken in their lives. But beyond that and more than that, I pray for the very presence of God manifested fully in their lives. May, not, may I pray that they not only uh, sense you, but truly feel you and, sh and see your hand of goodness and provision over their lives. This I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. We'll see you again next time.